Hey guys, just a quick video update. Um, still kind of dark communication from the uh, the program, so they kind of warned us their their priority right now was getting their second years graduated, their first years transitioned to the summer where they're going to be doing 12 hour clinical shifts and ACLS. So uh, we're still waiting to get the emails on our, um, I guess, verification of things like CPR, fingerprint clearance, uh, vaccinations, all that stuff. So we'll have like a secure database we have to upload that to. So uh, the clinical director, I believe, is the one who is handling that. And then we have our, uh, uh, of course, our registration. So they will be registering all of us. Um, I think there was about 20 or 22 people in my orientation. Um, so that's really my only update, uh, as far as the class go. Otherwise I've just been passing my time with, uh, you know, work and, and, and family. I got a son, so, uh, he's a handful and uh, you know, just a lot of reading. I'm still watching a lot of those, uh, reading a lot on the AARC website. And then also, uh, there's a lot of pretty cool respiratory uh, care type videos. You know, there's a lot of people just talking about what it is and why, and why it's cool. Um, but then there's actually a lot of neat stuff, a lot of scenario and simulation type things, uh, codes and things like that. Some of them are, are kind of, respiratory therapist specific like what is that person doing and uh some of them are just overall code scenarios there's a lot of that on youtube and that's pretty neat uh, to kind of see the way different places handle codes um you know uh there were some videos that were you know maybe like five six people in the room during a code uh there was one video where there seemed like there was 15 or 20 people in the room um but you know it's kind of intense, so I uh, definitely recommend checking out some code videos if you, if you haven't ever seen one of those, uh, just like one of the simulations. They're pretty cool. Um, I've been reading a lot about different stethoscopes, uh, picking the brains of a few people uh, in the medical field about what they think is does brand and, and type really matter? You know what's what's best for school versus clinicals versus uh, real life. Um, so, uh, I'll make a more in-depth video about stethoscopes, I think. Uh, I know my wife uses a Lippmann Classic 2 SE model. She's had for about four years. Uh, and she loves it. She doesn't need anything more, anything less. Um, you know, and that model retails anywhere from... I've seen them as cheap as 55 60 bucks. I've seen them all up to 100 depending on what colors and, and there's all kinds of like kind of goofy customization stuff that's not quite as important to functionality so uh so once i get around to get one of those uh, i'll do a more in-depth video um and my the other really thing that's going on right now i guess for me is uh just trying to land a job in a hospital uh preferably with flexible hours uh that's not uh, you know, I don't want to be environmental services or housekeeping or laundry or anything like that. Uh, you know, I, I think transportation would be a solid uh, position, you know, uh, something with rotating hours, uh, you know, 40 hours a week, but you can kind of vary. I hope, you know, hopefully they'd be flexible uh, with schools. So I'm currently applying for positions like that. Um you know, uh, also monitor tech positions, uh, a lot of the hospitals around here, that's kind of a 12 hour shift. So they only have two shifts, one or two, uh, that might be a little tougher to swing. Although I think knowing how to read EKGs would probably be a pretty neat skill to have. Um, don't not, not sure how useful it might be, but, um, probably couldn't hurt considering respiratory therapists are supposed to be, you know, not only, uh, you know, experts in pulmonology, but also cardiology. So 
can't imagine that's a bad skill to have, but, uh, you know, hopefully one of those will come through soon. Uh, you know, worst case, my current job, I can keep it as late as end of July, early August, depending on when school actually starts. Um, so, yeah, that's about all I really had today. Um, I said I, I'll probably make another video going more in-depth on orientation, what we talked about, um, a lot of neat topics in there, a lot of various assistant uh, assistance programs outside of uh, FAFSA if you're going uh, this federal financial aid type route. Um, there's a couple of neat programs locally for me. I'm sure you guys all have some sort of economic development programs around you guys too. Um, uh, alternate college uh, opportunities, you know, associate four-year degrees, um, stuff like that. So definitely a lot of content uh, to do videos on, but just, uh, just a quick update video today. And uh, I'll be... Uh, Probably doing another video either on, on, on one of those topics, uh, maybe stethoscopes, uh, or it might not be until I, I hear back and figure out what the, what's going on. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks.